Alice in Wonderland is a pretty good story, and the Tim Burton version has great effects and okay writing, although parts of it make very little sense. It's a bizarre film, to say the least. You either hate it or you love it, and I sit right in the middle. But this isn't a review, it's a theory. In fact, it's a sequel to my previous Wonderland theory. Watch that one first, because this one is on Alice Through the Looking Glass. It was requested and requested and requested and requested... And it's been a full year, so I have to make the follow-up I promised. And I hope you're prepared because this theory takes everything I've said and drives it way deeper into the lore. Hello, I'm The Theorizer, and let's begin. If you haven't seen my previous theory, definitely watch it right now. It talks about how all of Wonderland is Alice's delusion, that it's a figment of her imagination. But here's just the thing. I got a lot of comments from people who didn't understand what I meant. They commented things like, Of course it's a dream. Didn't you read the original book? And things like, Tim Burton's movie isn't canon to the original story. And I don't think those people understood my video. I'm well aware that this movie is totally different from the original stories, and that's just the thing. My theories are on this movie, and this movie alone. The altered story Tim Burton created. I'm not at all talking about the older stories, don't get that mixed up. And with that out of the way, let's do some theorizing. As I said before, in the first movie, Alice is going through a little crisis. She has to marry a man that she does not want to, so she brings back characters from her childhood to help her cope. She uses them to teach her lessons about how to handle the situation. The characters remind her of her father, and he was everything to her. This was all a pretty good theory, and it took a while to come up with, but then Through the Looking Glass came out, and I was flooded with comments. People were saying that everything I said was debunked by the sequel, and that I was so wrong. So I recently watched the movie, and I have one thing to say. It actually supports my theory. At the end of the first movie, the blue caterpillar is seen as a butterfly. He is flying alongside Alice. This is a figment of her imagination, just like how the caterpillar on Hamish wasn't actually blue. She just perceived it that way. And do you know why the blue butterfly is seen at the end of the movie? It's because she may have resolved one problem, the one about marrying Hamish, but that does not mean she's done with Wonderland. In the second movie, when she returns to England from the sea, she discovers that Lord Ascot has died, and that Hamish has taken over. And Hamish wants Alice's ship, just to get revenge on her. She is stuck between another rock and a hard place, and she needs to resolve another crisis. And that's right when the blue butterfly shows up, and takes her through a Wonderland looking glass, which, for some reason, happens to be in Lord Ascot's room. This is bizarre. So did Hamish's father actually know about Wonderland? Did his adventures teach him the truth about all of it? Or how about the rabbit hole, which is also on Lord Ascot's property? Did he know about that too? Is Wonderland real? No, no, no it is not. And no, he did not know about it at all. Because all of this, from the rabbit hole to the magic mirrors, are all a part of Alice's delusion. When Alice finds herself in the mental hospital, her mother tells her that she was found in Lord Ascot's room, on the floor babbling nonsense. This means that she was on the ground, dreaming her insane dream of Wonderland. The whole time, she probably tried to follow the non-existent blue butterfly through a mirror, and she slammed into it, landing on the ground unconscious, just like how she hit her head in the rabbit hole. I don't know how much more proof I can give that it's all a delusion. Oh, but I can. We know that she goes to Wonderland so that she can use her fictional childhood characters, who remind her of her dad, to work her way through a crisis and learn lessons along the way. And the sheer fact that the Ascots and Alice's mother constantly talk about time, 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 and then Alice travels to Wonderland and finds that time is a person, is no coincidence. Wonder Underland is her very own psyche. Her mother says that time is the enemy, and Alice learns that time is no enemy. It's as simple as that to prove that Tim Burton's incarnation is a psychotic delusion, and it's not a real adventure like they seem to push for 
in this movie. And again, this is all a theory on just Tim Burton's version. The original two books don't have anything to do with this theory, and neither does Alice Madness Returns or whatever, because they are all separate entities. But more evidence? I'd be happy to supply it. Hamish talks about how going out into the open ocean makes a person crazy. He says it happened to Alice, and it also happened to her father. He says this literally as she is chasing a butterfly into a mirror. This overlapping conversation is no coincidence. I don't even know how my old theory could be disproven at this point. Maybe there's something I've been missing, but enough of that because I have more evidence. The fact that looking glasses appear whenever Alice wants them to is strange. They not only appear in Ascot's manner, but they also appear all over the course of time. When Alice is about to be caught by time himself, she escapes through a mirror that suddenly appears as an escape route. Bizarre indeed. And at the end, when she finally learns her lesson and discovers how to resolve the crisis with Amish, a looking glass appears right there in Time's castle. What? How unrealistic. It's almost like, oh, it favors Alice. More evidence! During the very sad parting scene between Alice and the Hatter, the Mad Hatter says that family is a very important thing, that you only get one. This was sort of a bonus lesson that Alice learned on her adventure, and look, right here she put it to good use. Only minutes later, she talks about how she will take her mother over any deal or any contract. But that isn't all. Because also in this parting scene, Alice says she fears that she will never see the Mad Hatter again. She is slowly letting go of him. And then he tells her the following. He says, We shall meet in the Palace of Dreams in the Garden of Memory. Right here, he is literally telling Alice that he will meet her in her dreams. And then, she tells him dreams aren't reality. And finally, he says the one thing that pushes my entire two-part theory into blatant truth. He says, dream, reality, who's to say which is which? The Mad Hatter is openly telling Alice that everything she has experienced up until this point has been a figment of her imagination. He is telling her that it doesn't matter what is reality and what is fake. This describes the symptoms of countless forms of legitimate mental disorders where reality cannot be differentiated from dream. In some ways, this is like schizophrenia, which I brought up in my other video. And jeez, dream, reality, lack of differentiation, is Alice in Wonderland actually Inception? But don't fear theorizers here with more damn evidence! Why was the Mad Hatter fading away, getting sicker and sicker? One would assume it's because of this trinket he found, but look at him! He was slightly reclusive before Alice returned, but when she said she didn't believe him, he spiraled into turning white. I don't know how that happens. Oh yes, I do. Wonderland and the Mad Hatter are fueled by Alice's belief in them. So when Alice says how she doesn't believe in him, he starts to fizzle away. Only later, when he's on the brink of certain death, does Alice say she believes him. That and that alone saves his life. Not only does this prove that his life is in the hands of her belief, but that her giving up Wonderland altogether would indeed kill them all for good. Wonderland, dare I say Underland, is a fictitious world entirely powered by Alice Kingsley's developmental insanity. When she left the first time, look what it did to the Mad Hatter, as he slowly faded away as she forgot about all of them. Until of course she came back. And after the movie is over, Wonderland is gone forever. Sorry, but it's true. That's the purpose of the movie. After the first movie ended, we still saw the blue butterfly next to Alice comforting her, but this time, at the end of this movie, we see no such thing. Only when the entire world turns into a paper recreation, you know, for effect, do we see him appear. Wonderland is non-existent unless Alice says it is. When Alice appears in front of Hamish and the gang, they ask where the heck she came from. She jokingly says, from out of the walls. 
She is actually making fun of everything she's already done, you know, going through the walls and through the mirror. She never usually jokes about her insanity, but the fact that she now jokes about hysteria proves that she's let go of what she once thought was real. Alice Kingsley has permanently shut the door to Wonderland, just like the Mad Hatter said she would. I don't think there were any more direct sequel books in the original series that these movies are based off of, so we can assume that Alice is done. The only place she will see her friends anymore without blasting into insanity would be in her dreams, which is exactly what the Mad Hatter suggests. Or in other words, Alice's very own voice of reason. And that was my theory on Alice Through the Looking Glass, Tim Burton's version only. I hope you enjoyed that at least a little bit. Until next time, I'm The Theorizer.